So we are looking at this December 2023, question number two, question number two, question number two. So because the population is uh, quite uh, little today, I'll have to upload this question on YouTube. So that means, uh, basically means that I have to, to write our contacts here for any student in this case who would want to join us. Because RCM is the place to be great. So we are doing this December 2023, question number two. December 2023, question number two. H Limited, a public limited company whose functional currency is the Kenya shilling, operates in the digital economy sector. The company has recently diversified its operations by acquiring shares in a foreign entity called S Limited, so a foreign subsidiary, a foreign subsidiary. The functional currency of S Limited is the Krona, K-R, Krona. The following statements of financial position were extracted from the financial records of the companies as of 30 September 2023. So we have H Limited, we have S Limited. Additional information, on 1st October 2022, H Limited acquired an 80% controlling interest in S Limited for a cash consideration of 3,000 million when the retained earnings of S Limited stood at uh, Krona 540 million. The fair value of the identifiable net assets of S Limited were Krona 2,700 million. The excess of the fair value over the carrying value was due to an increase in value of plant was remaining economic use for life, approximately five years at acquisition. H Limited uses the fair value method to measure the non-controlling interest in subsidiaries. The fair value of NCI in S Limited on 1st October 2022 amounted to Kronas 900 million. Note three, on 1st October 2022, H Limited exported goods worth Kenya shillings 180 million on account to S Limited. This transaction has been recorded by both entities. However, the account payable is still recorded at the rate of these goods had been sold to third parties by S Limited as of 30th September 2023. Good arising on acquisition of S Limited had not been impaired since acquisition. The following foreign exchange rates are relevant. So S Limited had not issued any ordinary shares since the date of acquisition. So they want us to do very simple things, give them the value of goodwill. This I'll be able to do pretty fast. Give them the value of goodwill arising. Give them the value of goodwill arising on acquisition of S Limited in Kenya shillings. And then B, consolidated statement of financial position for H Group as of 30th September 2023. I can see Joy saying that we never finished. Remember where we have reached right now? It's not about even finishing a question. It's about getting seven entries or like that, which are correct. I think we passed as many entries as possible. Let's do this fresh question, Joyce. Let's do these fresh questions. The more the fresh questions we do, the better for us so that we can be able to get the exam techniques, you know. The one you did so many correct entries. And it's also very similar to this. All right. So then the first thing that I shall do here, I'll do the group structure. So the group structure, I can see the H that acquired S. S, in this case here, 80% of S. 80% of S, and uh, of course this S is in a foreign company, a uh, foreign country, so this S becomes a foreign subsidiary. A foreign subsidiary. It becomes a foreign subsidiary, like that. So it becomes a foreign subsidiary. Now, of course I know the order that the examiner has asked us to follow. You know, the examiner wants us A, to get the value of goodwill on acquisition of S Limited, in Kenya shillings. B, consolidated statement of financial position for H group as at that. The moment I've understood that this is a, a subsidiary, subsidiary Y, of course, we have discussed this severally, 80% is really controlling because this is more than 50%. Using the quantitative threshold, this is more than 50%. So normally the moment I've understood that I have a subsidiary, the very first thing that I will think about, of course, of the group structure is to consolidate to consolidate. Don't go reading those many, 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 many notes of the accounts. They really confuse you. You'll be able to lose out on those uh, seven correct ticks straight away the moment you start reading so many things. So if I'm the one doing this, 
I will come and uh, basically number my questions very well. You don't have to start with A. You don't have to start with A. So what I'll do, I'll come here straight away. I've been able to draw this. So straight away, what I'll do, I'll come here and I say here, consolidated. So in this case, here we are doing the company is called H. So this is the H group. So we are calling it H group. So we are calling it H group. So we are calling it H group. H group. Consolidated statement of financial position as at this date. As at this date, the date given the balance sheet date, the statement of financial position date is 30th September 2023. 30th September 2023. So I'll straight away label this as my part B. I'll straight away label this as my part B. I will have the perform. I love that student who is saying I'll have the performer. That is the best thing you can do. This is how I would want you to start with a, a group consultation question this semester. Don't start with any other. Group consultation question this semester and ensure that you're able to do it within 40 minutes and maximize, that's 37 minutes maximum. And maximize all the correct entries. Maximize on the correct entries. So then we have assets there. So assets, we have non current assets. So we have here non current assets. I'll really squeeze here. So non current assets. So non current assets, what do we have there? So for non current assets, we have property, plant, and equipment. So we have property, plant, and equipment. Remember, it's just the format. It's just the format you're doing here. We're not punching any calculator. So I will take 8,500, 8,500, plus in this case here, though, because I'm consolidating S is a, a subsidiary, plus 3,000. But now remember that these 3,000 are chromas. These are chromas. I must convert them to our reporting currency. And remember, this parent company is based in Kenya. So our reporting currency is the Kenya shilling. So I need straight away to convert the figures. I need straight away to convert the figures. Thank you, Paul. I'll need very fast to convert the figures given here of S limited to what year to Kenya shillings. So the question is, what are you able to remember about balance sheet figures? The balance sheet foreign currency figures, when you're translating them, we normally use which uh, rate? Which rate do we normally use? Which exchange rate do we normally use? Which exchange rate do we normally use? The closing rate. So here we are doing a balance sheet. We are doing a statement of financial position. We shall use the closing rate. We shall use the closing rate very fast. And if you look at note number five, note number five, what have they told us? The following foreign exchange rates are given. So we have 1st October 2022. 1st October 2022 is our acquisition date. That's when we acquired the subsidiary. So that is acquisition rate or historical rate. At times they call it the historical rate. Then we have 30th September 2023, 0.8. So this is the reporting date. This is the reporting date. That is September 2023 is the reporting date. So we are saying that uh, because this is basically at the end of the year. Remember, balance sheet is uh, happening. These are our assets, liabilities, equities at the end of the year as at the end of the year. So we'll use the end of the year closing rate there, which is 0 0.8. And that 0 0.8, you can see what is given up there. It is 0 0.8 crones. It is 0 0.8 crones to one Kenya shilling. It is 0 0.8 crones to one Kenya shilling. It's crones to one Kenya shilling. And now here I have my crones. These 3,000 are crones. They are crones. So 3,000 crones or kronas. How much will this be in form of Kenya shillings? So if I cross multiply, I will discover it will be 3,000 times 1 over 0 0.8. So basically, I'm doing this to establish the format. But in my case here, whenever I have crones and I'm moving to Kenya shillings, I will basically be dividing. Whenever I have crones and I'm moving to Kenya shillings, I will be dividing. Whenever I have Kenya shillings to crones, I will be doing the opposite, which is multiplying. So in this case here, we are dividing. So we divide this by 0.8 like that. We divide this by 0.8 like that. Of course, we are not picking anybody's calculator. We shall be doing adjustments later. Let's just move very fast. Then we have investment in S Limited. Investment in S Limited, who is S Limited? S Limited is our investment. For that matter, an investment that we are controlling, our subsidiary. 
So you can't really book it the way it is. Whenever you see investment in a subsidiary, then you will need to do what you have to come and uh, replace that with goodwill. So you need to come and replace that with goodwill. So this one, we shall be able to do this. So this one is just a working. I'll be able to do this. Of course, this will have to be to be possible, but one wants me actually to do goodwill. But in most cases in your exam, you won't even get that time. To be very honest with you, in most cases, although this is quite a short, especially when you get your examiner giving you an income statement and a statement of financial report to, 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 to consolidate both, you may not have that luxury of time to do very many things. You will have to simply contend with these performers for both. But the good thing, whenever the examiner gives you both, then you end up getting so many free of charge marks, so many free of charge marks. So you may not be able to do it. Of course, here we shall do it. But of course, in that uh, pressure of the exam, you'll be surprised. You may not even be able to reach there, but we shall overcome. But this is really a short one. This one, you have to do everything. So investment in S limited will leave it like that. Then we have other intangible assets. So we have here other, other intangible assets. So the other intangible assets, what do we have there? Of course, I will take the one of the parent plus the one of the subsidiary. So parent is 1,600 plus 510. 1,600 plus 510. Now this 510 has to be translated, has to be translated to Kenya shillings. So now we have known it's about dividing throughout. You see like other intangible assets, there will be no adjustment at all. I've already, in this case here, been able to harvest a low-hanging fruit. These are free of charge mark. Yeah, and I'm 100% sure there will be no any adjustment. So already this is correct. I may not get this right, but already this is correct. This is correct. So from there, as a gentleman, we go to current assets. So you go to current assets. So you go to current assets. So current assets, what am I able to see under current assets? So the current assets, I have inventory. So here we have inventory. So here we have inventory. So inventory, what do we have here? We have 2,500, 1960. So 2,500 plus 1960, we divide this by 0.8. All right. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we have what we are calling here receivables. So we have what we are calling receivables. So receivables, what do we have here? So receivables, we have 2,300, 1,320. So 2,300 plus 1,320 divided by the closing rate, which is 0.8 divided by the closing rate, which is 0.8. All right. From there, we have cash and cash equivalents. So we have cash. So cash, what do I have there? So for cash, I have 60, 1650 and 640. So I'm consolidating, I'm adding 1650 and 640 divided by 0.8. Some of, one of these, or even two of them may be correct, may not be needing any adjustment, may not be needing any adjustment. All right. So then we have our total assets. We have our total assets. How are we financing these total assets? To finance these total assets, we have our equity. We have our equity and debt instruments. So we have here our equity. So equity we begin with share capital. Like, like these are free of charge mark, you know. Because share capital, I'll only pick the one of the parent. So I'll only pick the one of the parent. So what is the figure of the parent here? What is the figure of the parent here? What is the figure of the parent here? The figure of the parent, we have 5,000, isn't it? 5,000. Take this as a final figure. Take this as a final figure. It's in Kenya shillings, of course. All right. After share capital, I have share. This examiner is accurate. He's giving me four marks for free. Four marks for free. So we have here share premium. Share premium again, parent. Parent. So in this case here, I can see this is 2,000. So even if I don't do any adjustments, I can see this correct, this is correct. I know this will be correct. I know this will be correct. Those are three marks already. The way we mark this, automatically you are uh, six marks ahead of very many ninjas who will just look at a group consolidation like this and then they'll not write anything. Most students, whenever they see group consolidation, they'll either not write anything or they start with those big workings and then at the end of the day, they get lost somewhere there in the bush. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate. Then we have retained earnings. We have retained earnings. We have retained earnings. This one, we need a working. Perhaps I'm just writing it like that and leave that uh, for the examiner to go and work it out. 
So do we have any other thing? Yes, we have an NCI. We have an NCI. We have an NCI. And because of these exchange rates, exchange translations, we have what we call a translation reserve. A translation. We have a translation reserve. So we need workings for both. We need workings for both. We need a translation reserve or a forex reserve, yes. Or a forex reserve, yes. All right. Forex reserve, I like that. Now from there, we go to the non-current what year? Liabilities. So go to the non-current liabilities. So straight away, go to non-current liabilities. So non-current liabilities, what do we have there? So non-current liabilities, what do we have there? So the non-current liabilities, ladies and gentlemen, what we have there, we have 10% loan stock. 10% loan stock. So we have here 10% loan stock. 10% loan stock. So 10% loan stock, what do we have there? 10% loan stock. We have 1300 plus 1360. So we have here 1300 plus 1360. This has to be divided by 0 0.8. All right. And then we have, uh, I've seen another free mark. I like whenever I see deferred tax and current tax, those are free marks. I've never understood why students miss out these free marks. I've never. Is it because of exam fever? Is it because of exam fever? Is it because of exam fever? I've never understood why students don't pick these free marks. So please, for deferred tax, write there 650 plus 1268 divided by 0.8. Write there for deferred tax. 650 plus 1268 divided by 0.8. That's a deferred tax. And then we go to current liabilities. Current liabilities, please consolidate. Now you guys are experts, consolidate. Write 3800 plus 1160 divided by 3800 plus 1160 divided by 0 0.8. Divided by 0 0.8. And then lastly, we have current taxation, 900 plus 440 divided by 0.8, divided by 0.8. And there are students, in this case, you will always get them for some reason. I mean, it's crazy. This must be the devil uh, visiting you, all right? You get somebody, in this case, you're putting a bracket here. So ending again, exchanging this. No, this 0.8 does not involve this. This 0.8 only involves this uh, for the subsidiary, for the subsidiary. All right, and the gentlemen, once I finish with the pro forma, I know now you guys are experts. The next thing that I will think about, ladies and gentlemen, will be the net assets. I have to understand my subsidiary even better. I must understand my subsidiary even better. So you mentioned there, the net assets of who? The net assets of the, the, net assets of the subsidiary. The net assets of the subsidiary. So very fast, you mentioned there, net assets of the subsidiary. That's what I do before I pick my calculator. I have to understand this subsidiary by basically looking at uh, the assets it has. I mean, have I procured a bad investment here? So I must understand the assets. 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 I must understand the assets here. I must understand the assets of us. So net assets, net assets of the subsidiary. So net assets of the subsidiary. So remember, we're using the equities. So the equities, that is at acquisition, at acquisition, and at what year? At reporting. At acquisition and at reporting. So we're using the equities. Equities, we start with share capital. Share capital. Remember, net assets will always be captured using forex. Net assets will always be captured using the forex currency, the foreign currency. Thank you very much, Paul. So the net assets, we are capturing the net assets of the subsidiary. Net assets of the subsidiary. So ordinary share capital of uh, S Limited. Is there somebody who is able to see the ordinary share capital of S Limited? Ordinary share capital of S Limited, abracadabra, 1560, right? So, and what do you know about share capital? This will remain the same. Please don't change. Don't change because this must be crones. This must be the foreign currency that you have there. Net assets and goodwill. 
will always be computed using Forex, and then you translate. Doesn't change, yes. Then we have, in this case, a share premium. Then we have the share premium. We have the share premium. So share premium, what do we have there? Share premium for the subsidiary. I can see a figure of 200. So this will be 200 and 200 like that. Remember, I'm following the equities given there. So from there, I have retained earnings. Are you able to see the retained earnings? Are you able to see the retained earnings? This one changes. Retained earnings at acquisition, you must be a bright chap. Retained earnings at acquisition, they have given us that in no, Roman 1, not 1. 540 at acquisition. So in this case here on 1st October 2022, H Limited acquired an 80% controlling interest in S Limited for cash consideration of 3,000 when the retained earnings were 540 crones. Fortunately, they have given us 540 crones. So in this case here, retained earnings at acquisition will be 540. How about retained earnings at reporting? How about retained earnings at reporting? So retained earnings at reporting, retained earnings at reporting, I can see there it was 14 what year? 1442. Because you're looking at net assets, not of the parent, but of the subsidiary. 1442, 1442, 1442, 1442. Now from there, ladies and gentlemen, I will ask myself a simple question. Do we have something at the subsidiary which was acquired at a historical rate? And still this subsidiary has that asset or liability in its books by the end of the year, which in this case here may have uh, gained. We need to do in this case here uh, some gain analysis of uh, it will be just one item, one item. Like in this case, they have told you vividly. I mean, I saw some ninja who did this very well, but other ninjas here, yeah, okay, it's only one ninja who did this very well. This is given in note number three, note number three, check note number three. Check note number three. There's something happening there. On 1st October 2022, H Limited exported goods worth Kenya shillings 180 million on account to S Limited. When you're told that these goods have been sold to another company on account, that means credit. Goods sold on credit. So there's a credit facility which was given to S Limited. To S Limited. No worries. No worries. So basically, we know that uh, S Limited owes H Limited 180 million. This transaction has been recorded by both entities. However, the account payable is still recorded at the rate of exchange that prevailed at the date of the transaction in the financial statements of S Limited. All these goods have been sold to third parties by S Limited as of 30 September 2023. When you're told that all the goods have been sold, there is something I won't compute. When I'm told that these intra sales, these internal sales goods have been sold, all of them, there is something I won't compute. Do you know what is that thing that I won't compute? Do you know it? Thank you very much. It will be the UPS or the URP, UPS. We shall not compute and realize profit on stock because now everything is going to third parties or profit. Profit has been realized uh, by selling. All profit there has been, there's nothing unrealized. We will talk of unrealization. If we have some of those internal goods sold between ourselves, still in the group. Ah, this is something very easy. So I need to get the exchange, the translation gain, stroke loss on this payable. Translation gain, please write like that. Translation gain, translation, translation gain. Stroke payable, stroke payable, I don't know, stroke loss on the payable, stroke loss on the payable. Very easy, very easy. So we have the payable, we have the payable at, when was this uh, sale done? The payable on 1st October 2022, 1st October 2022, it was Kenya shillings 180. Kenya is 180. Kenya is 180. And of course, this being a foreign subsidiary, upon receiving these goods, they must have translated this Kenya is 180. They translated this at what rate? Remember, at this date, this date, they've given us a rate at this date, 1st October 2022. 1st October 20. Are you able to see that rate? It is 0 0.9, isn't it? 
So now I'm changing this to crones. Remember from crones to Kenya shillings we divided, eh? Crones to Kenya shillings we divided. Now from Kenya shillings to the foreign, from Kenya shillings to the crones, what do we do? We multiply. Or uh, ra rather, you can also do this thing in the mother tongue way, although that would really waste your time. Once I've done it once, I'll always get a shortcut. I can come and I can see the rate there on this date is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 crones equals one Kenya shilling, equals one Kenya shilling. Then how about 180 Kenya shillings? How about 180 Kenya shillings? You see, I'll take 180 times 0.9. So I'll take 180 times 0.9, which gives me how much in terms of crones? 180 times 0.9, which gives me how much in terms of crones? One hundred and sixty two. Thank you very much. Now, the same payable. Now, you see, at the end of the year, we must translate the same payable at the end of the year will be worth how much? The same payable at the end of the year at the reporting date. The same payable at the reporting date. So we have here payable. We have here payable. Payable at the reporting date, which is 30th, 9, 2022. So it will be still in Kenya shillings 180. In Kenya shillings, it is still 180. But now the rate will be different. The rate will be different. On this particular rate, the data mean, the rate is 0 0.8. The rate is 0 0.8. So times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. So what are you able to get there as a gentleman? 180 times 0 0.8 gives me what figure? Gives me 144. So this gives me 144. So please subtract. Please subtract there. Please subtract there. And give me the forex. The forex. The forex gain. The forex gain. So it will be 18. Is it a gain to you or a loss? Please talk to me. Is it a gain or a loss? Is it a gain or a loss? It's a gain because a payable is a liability. A payable is a liability. And when the liability goes down, then we gain. So remember, we have this. Who is gaining? Who is gaining here? The person gaining is the subsidiary. Because this is a liability for the subsidiary. So the subsidiary will be gaining. You know, Kenya is not doing any uh, forex translations. No, it is a subsidiary doing that forex translation. So they'll be able to gain. So in this case here, we have a forex gain. A forex gain. A forex gain on payable. When a payable, when a liability reduces, you gain. Don't book it here. So you are booking it here. We are booking it here. We are booking it there. We are booking it there. 18. I mean, it's, it's a net asset. It's an advantage to the equity holders. The equity are gaining here. The equity holders are gaining here. The equity holders are gaining here. So it's an equity component like that. Now, please read note number one. Read note number one. On 1st October 2022, H Limited acquired an 80% controlling interest in S Limited for a cash consideration of Kenya shillings 300, 3,000 million when the retained earnings were 540 crones. The fair values of the identifiable net assets of S Limited were crones to 700. The excess of the fair value of the carrying uh, value was due to an increase in the value of plant was remaining economic higher. So there's a depreciation there. Ah, so then we have in this case here, fair value adjustment. We have in this case here, the fair value adjustment. We have the fair value adjustment. We have the fair value adjustment. We have the fair value adjustment. So we have here the fair value, fair value adjustment. And then we have fair value adjustment, depreciation component of it. The depreciation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the current trend of the examiner. The examiner nowadays will not give you fair value adjustment. What the examiner will do, he will come here outrightly and he will give you the total net assets. About this is what the examiner does nowadays. Net assets. He'll give you the total net assets here. Total. Total. So like now here, he has, has he given me the total net assets at acquisition? Has he given me the total net, net assets at acquisition? You can see the fair values of the identifiable net assets of S Limited. On that date of acquisition, they were 2,700. So remember, there is no depreciation here. No depreciation there. You know, there, is, there is zero. So they could easily use this balancing figure, 2,700 minus this, minus this, minus this. 
Give me the fair value adjustment here. Give me the fair value adjustment as balancing figure now. 2700 minus this, minus this, minus this. Give me the fair value adjustment. So they're giving me 400. They're giving me 400. They're giving me 400. They're giving me 400. Is that okay? All of us, are we getting that 400 really? Please just take your calculator 400. Thank you very much. So what then do you think will be the fair value adjustment at reporting? Fair value adjustment at reporting. Fair value adjustment at reporting. What do we have there? Fair value adjustment at reporting. Fair value adjustment at reporting. The same. Thank you very much. So 400, 400, 400. But now remember, we need the fair value adjustment, depreciation bit of it as at this date here. Not many students will be able to get this figure. Not many, not many. Not many students will be able to get that figure. Have they given me the economic useful life? Have they given me the economic useful life? Have they given me the economic useful life of the assets? Yeah, five years. So the depreciation per annum will be that 400, the fair value adjustment divided by five, which gives me 80. But remember, this is for a whole year, for a whole year. And normally we prefer cumulative. So we want to know how many months have I stayed with this subsidiary in the year? How many years have I stayed with this subsidiary since we bought it? So please check the date of acquisition. Date of acquisition. Date of acquisition is 1st October 2022. 1st October 2022. And then we have the date of financial reporting here. Date of financial reporting is 30th September 2022. So how many months are these? Following day, following day. So a whole year. We have stayed with this subsidiary for a whole year. Is there somebody who is able to see one whole year? Thank you, Mueni. We have stayed with this subsidiary for a whole year. We have stayed with this subsidiary for a whole year. One year, one year, one year. So ladies and gentlemen, we have in this case here one year, so times one. So this is 80 basically, and this is normally a deductible. This is normally a deductible. So then are you able to give me this net assets total at reporting? Is there anybody who is able to give me this total at reporting? So now you take this 1560 plus 200 plus 142 plus 18 plus 400 minus 80, which gives me 3540. 3540, 3540, 3540, 3540. So for the three students who tried their homework and sent in the group, is there anybody who was able to get this 3540? Is there anybody? Or rather, even if you never submitted, even if you never submitted, but, but you tried it, is there anybody who was able to get this 3540? Anybody who was able to get that 3540? Okay, which 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 component did you guys uh, miss? That's a learning area. That's what you planned. What were you able to miss out? I know two things. Forex gain, the payable is yes. For gain on payable, yes. Gain on payable. Gain on payable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So then, ladies and gentlemen, once you've done that, everything becomes very easy. Everything becomes very easy because now I know it's about pump. So come and give me the pump. Give me the post-acquisition profit. So post-acquisition profit is the growth in our net assets. It is 3540 minus 2700. It is 3540 minus 2700. So 3540, so it is 840. It is 840. It is 840 crones. It is 840 crones. So once you have reached it, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think will be the next thing to be done? What do you think will be the next thing to be done here? Abracadabra. Very good. Before you start in this case here, before, you know, in most cases we're used to the normal group consolidation. We're used to distributing this to parent and NCI. That can really confuse you. Actually, you should now leave that to the NCI, when we reach the NCI, uh, NCI, we shall be uh, by looking at this later. For now, don't apportion this to, no, no, no. Translate the net assets. The next thing you should do is to translate the net assets. So in this case here, translated net assets. Because we start from Forex, 
Han har ju translit. Så translated net assets. Translated net assets. So the translated net assets, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here? What do we have here? We have here net assets at acquisition. Net assets at acquisition. I'm going to create more space for my sake. I just have to do some abracadabra. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. So we have here the net assets. So we have here the net assets. We have here the net assets at acquisition. Net assets at acquisition. It is 2,700. Crowns. Then we have in this case here, add pump. Add pump. Pap, in this case here, we had a figure of, uh, was it 840? Please remind me, I rubbed mine. 840 crones. 840 crones. And then I should be able to get here my expected closing net assets. Expected closing net assets. Expected closing net assets. Are you able to add these two? Are we able to add those two expected closing net assets? Expected closing net assets, 3540. So we have here 3540. And then we have in this case here, we have in this case here the actual, the actual closing net assets. So the actual closing net assets, we have, of course, this is the actual, actual 3540. Now, from there, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to translate this now to Kenya shillings. So net assets at acquisition, we are translating these using the historical, using the acquisition rate. Using the acquisition rate. Is there somebody who is able to give me the acquisition rate? 0 0.9, isn't it? And remember, these are crones to Kenya shillings. These are crones to Kenya shillings. So should I multiply? You know, we have done that concept, if you remember. So should I multiply or should I divide? Multiply or divide? We divide here. Yeah? Crones to Kenya shillings, we discover we are dividing. So divide this by 0 0.9. So what do we have here in form of Kenya shillings? What do we have there in form of Kenya shillings? So 2700 divided by 0 0.9. So this gives me 3000. 3000. And then we have in this case here the PAP, the post acquisition profit. Profits will always be translated using the average rate. Profits will always be average, yes, average. Profit, of course, the moment I've said it there by dividing here, everything here will be divided. So divided by 0 0.75, divided by 0 0.75, divided by 0 0.75. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we come to this. So it's 40 divided by 0 0.75. So always profits average. So Marianne gives me a figure of 11, 20, 11, 20. 11.20, Muheni as well has been able to confirm. So giving me what expected net assets. Is there somebody who is able to give me the expected net assets? So I'm being given a figure of 4120. 4120. Thank you so much. So the expected net asset in the form of Kenya shillings is 4120. How about this actual closing net assets? This way we have to translate this. We translate this using the closing rate. Are you able to see the closing rate there? Are you able to see the closing rate there? Are you able to see the closing rate there? The closing balance sheet rate, 0 0.8. So you translate this using 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Using 0 0.8. So 3540 divided by 0.8 gives me what figure? Thank you so much, Maureen. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Mary Ann. 44.25. 44.25. So we have here 44.25. So is there somebody who is seeing in this case here some foreign gain, forex gain? Because you can see what you expected is 4120, but you have ended up actually getting a higher figure. We have ended up actually getting a higher figure. So it is a 305 gain. There is a 305 gain here. A 305 
gain, a 305 gain. So there is a, a forex gain there. There is a forex gain there. A forex, a foreign exchange gain of net assets. Gain, gain. Of three zero five, of three zero five, of three zero five, and then now we shall take these to the foreign reserves. This straight away, you take these to the equity of your business. So this three or five, you take it straight. You are pushing this three or five now. So please go ahead and apportion this figure. Go ahead and apportion this figure. Go ahead and apportion this figure with your permission. Then I should be able to wrap this because of my space. Remember the asset, this is an asset which grew. Whenever an asset grows, that's a gain. If the asset value went down, I would have called it a loss. 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 So the three of five, the three of five to foreign reserves, Foreign reserves, foreign reserves, foreign reserves, foreign reserves. So we start with the forex reserve, forex reserve of the parent, of the parent. So it will be three or five times 80%. Three or five times 80%, which gives me what figure somebody here. Three or five times 80%. I hope the percentage was 80. I hope the percentage is 80. I hope the percentage is 80. Yeah, we acquired 80%, remember. We acquired 80%, 244. So here we have 244. And then we have here to the Forex Reserve of LCI. Of LCI. Forex Reserve of LCI, which will be 305 times 20%. 305 times 20%, which will end up giving me what figure here? 61. 61. Leave it like that. Leave it like that, first of all. The pub, we shall be sharing pub later. Leave it like that. Leave it like that. The moment I do the net assets of the subsidiary, please seize an opportunity and do goodwill. Do goodwill. Do goodwill. So go ahead and do goodwill. Now, goodwill will be my last working. I'm so sure by the time I do goodwill, I may not even get time to do LCI. In an exam, of course, we shall do it, but in an exam, you may have to get time. You can see that I'm trying to really move fast. If you're realizing, I'm trying to move very fast, but already I'm into my one hour. I'm into my one hour, and I'm not even like halfway of the quit. What I know for the very many years I've done, I told you like during my time, I was the best in, we used to call it FA4. Those days, the advanced financial reporting, the best in cast name. In, in ACC, when I was doing this uh, group, not a group, but uh, it's called SBR, Strategic Business Reporting, I was number 19 globally. And no question of mine has ever balanced in an exam. What I'm very good at is uh, exam techniques and knowing how to utilize my time, knowing how to pick correct entries very fast. Because so many students will keep on doing a lot of, I mean, what I would call like nonsense. I mean, they are onto this thing. For one and a half hours, how do you do one question and a half hours? And there is a group cash flows waiting for you. There is a reconstruction waiting for you. There is EPS waiting for you. There is in this case here, for example, deferred tax as well waiting for you. You can't manage. A good student in this case here will be able to pass this paper. Is that student who normally, normally call it the rule of seven ticks? Once I realize my seven ticks are okay, I go to another question. I go to another question. Their theory is waiting for me. I have to punch them as a ninja. All right? And then from there, of course, should I get time? Which I doubt. You'll never get that time. Should I get time? Then I should be able to go back and perfect. I normally sympathize with students. Whenever I see a student taking more than an hour in an exam, doing one question, I know that for sure this student, when I'm, when I, especially those days when I was investigating, for sure, this student will fail. Is there anybody who has ever tried a FR before here? I mean, how, how was your experience with time management? Were you able to, to, to do all the five questions? Anybody who tried, of course, you failed. Uh, sorry for that. Anybody who tried, just your experience with time. Because what I know, 
the students in AFR, most of you guys are very good. Like right now from the homework that I gave, I mean, what you guys were able to demonstrate, already you guys have passed like yesterday. But when it comes to exams, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens. Time is normal. <laughs> no, no, Mike. But the moment you just know how to manage the time, you have to touch every question. You must touch every question. It's not about perfection. It's not about perfection. But now, right now where we have reached, honestly speaking, of course I'll finish this question, but I'm just asking you a general question. Eh? Do you feel like you have reached a level where this group cash flow or a group uh, consolidation, you guys will be able to get seven ticks? Because it's about seven ticks each at two marks. Maximum, mostly will be 14. Uh, have you reached a level where you guys feel like, like that uh, where now I am, I'm able to get these seven ticks within 37 minutes? Within 37 minutes. Within 37 minutes, I should be able to get these seven ticks. Those years are very few. Those years are... <laughs> so please practice. Seven, seven ticks within what year? 37 minutes. The other thing as I continue, please, I should never... Actually, if I come to an exam room, fortunately, I don't know your faces, but if I were to know your faces, if I come to an exam room and they get you sweating... I don't like, I don't, I don't believe in, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, in going physical, but if I get my any of my students sweating in an exam room, you should be able to allow me to pinch you a little bit. Because there is now something abnormal with you. You should be able to allow me to pinch you a little bit, especially when you are sweating from the wrong places here, DV. Yeah. Get somebody in this case, it's like, I mean, tons of fevers. You're sweating with a mic. Why should you sweat? Who told you that you must pass this exam? Is there anything that we call must? In this life, there is nothing that is must. There is nothing that is a must. Trust you me. That thing of saying a must is what messes very many students, especially in AFR. You know, in AFR, people go and they start sweating and then they go blank 100%. When you ask them, and some of them are my age mates, my age mates, when you ask them, why are you sweating? I mean, is, it, is there someone who is giving you like pressure to you that you have to pass? Of course, I know the benefits of passing. But I mean, when you go into this particular exam in a, a highly pressurized environment, where you are really sweating, I trust you, you will not be able to get these seven ticks correct. You can't. That is the time you start reading a question and then you wonder whether this is a FR or a home science. Don't sweat. There's nothing like a must. Go to that exam, relaxed. Put in your best. Put in your best. When you fail, go and explain to your spouse, tell your spouse, you know, yes, I, I read as if I was reading for a PhD, but you know, this cast never failed. And I mean, I laugh it off. That is it. I'm not praying that my students laugh. I hope you get my advice that all the students that for the years that I've marked these exams, for the years that I've uh, supervised these exams, ladies and gentlemen, any student who sweats will always fail. Any student who sweats will always, why should you fail? Why should you sweat? I mean, this is a, a normal paper. I should be able to smile on an exam as I do these papers. It's about adding, 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 subtracting here and there. So we shall not sweat and we shall not fail, of course. We shall not sweat and we shall not fail. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All those papers you have ever failed before, trust you me, if you were to be very honest, sweating must have happened. Sweating must have happened. That's why you panicked. That's why you panicked. All right. So goodwill. So now we are on goodwill. Now we are on goodwill. So straight away, we got goodwill. So you see, goodwill has been asked by the examiner. Please note this figure of 2700. This figure will use it for goodwill computation. Goodwill has been asked by the examiner. Goodwill has been asked by the examiner. So as I do it, I will have to write that this is a whatever question. I will have to write this is, I will have to write the number very well. This is part A, goodwill. The examiner has asked me to provide goodwill. I have to write the number very well and even double underline to draw the attention of the examiner. Goodwill. So goodwill, you give me the parents' purchase consideration. The parents... Purchase consideration. The parents purchase consideration. So are you able to see the parent paid how much? 
And remember, when you're looking at the parents' purchase consideration, it's always important you look at the one given in the balance sheet and the one given in the notes to see where they are tying. Eh? Yeah. In most cases, they'll tally, but unless there is an additional investment which was done. So like here, we are told on 1st October 2012, H Limited acquired 80% controlling interest in S Limited for a cash consideration of 3,000 million Kenya shillings. So 3,000 million, 3,000 Kenya shillings. But remember, net assets and goodwill, they must always be done in the form of what year? Yeah? Forex. This Kenya shillings, home currency. I have to translate this to foreign exchange, to foreign currency, I mean, to foreign currency. Always net assets and the goodwill must be done in forex, foreign currency, foreign currency. So are you able to see in this case that the forex rate is how much they are? Forex rate. Remember, this was at the date of acquisition, isn't it? This was at the date of acquisition, so 0 0.9. So remember, these are Kenya shillings, Kenya shillings to the crones. So remember, it is 0 0.9 crones equals 1K. You can always be doing like this. How about 3,000 Kenya shillings in terms of, so I realize I'll multiply this times this, which gives me how much my good students here. Which gives me how much? 2,700, Maureen has told me. 2,700, Maureen has told me that. Thank you so much. And then we add the NCI's consideration. Add fair value of NCI at acquisition. At, are you able to see that figure? Fair value of NCI at acquisition. Are you able to see that figure? Fair value of NCI at acquisition. Are you able to see? It's given there. It's given here. It's given here. It's given here. It's given here in note number two. H limited uses the fair value method in subsidiaries. The fair value of NCI is 900 crones. They're crones, foreign currency, 900. And then you come and less, in this case here, you less net assets at acquisition. You less net assets at acquisition. You less. Net assets, you less net assets at acquisition. Net assets at acquisition, younger P. Do you remember that figure I told you to pick it up? 2700. 2700. 2700. So, is there someone who is able to get goodwill at acquisition? Goodwill at acquisition. Goodwill at acquisition is how much? 900. Impairment loss. None. They have told us that there wasn't any impairment. If you look at uh, this note, they've told us that there wasn't any impairment. They've told us that there wasn't any impairment. That's what number four, goodwill rising on acquisition of VS Limited had not been impaired since acquisition. So that we are able to get here goodwill at reporting. Goodwill at reporting. Would be that reporting, which of course will be 900. And then now you go straight away to translation of this. So now you bring it from that country to home. So translation. So translation. So translation. So we have here goodwill at acquisition. You basically pick it from here. Eh? We are translating, you basically pick it from here. Goodwill at acquisition. 900, we have here impairment loss, which is P and L. Average rate will be used. Impairment loss, these are P and L items. You'll use average, of course, here it's zero. For you to give us, ladies and gentlemen, expected goodwill. Expected goodwill, which is still 900. 900 there. How about the actual goodwill? Actual goodwill is 900. So remember, these are crones that, I'm that I would want to translate. I would want to translate this. I would want to translate this. I would want to translate this. I would want to translate this to home currency. These are crones to home currency. So goodwill at acquisition. You guys gave me the acquisition exchange rate. Are you able to see it? Acquisition exchange rate. Are you able to see it? Acquisition exchange rate? 0 0.9. So 0 0.9. So 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 
0 0.9. Remember, these are 0 0.9 crones. 0 0.9 crones per Kenya shilling. Of course, impairment loss just for your own, for your own, for your own understanding of things later. I know it will be zero, but just put this figure here to show that this impairment loss, it shall always be translated at the average rate. And the average rate here, the average rate here is 0 0.8. The average rate is 0 0.8. If I were you, I would write somewhere there, average, average. Because in the next working, in the next question, we get this. Then we have an actual, or rather, please give me, remember these are crones and these are crones, so I'm dividing, eh? I'm dividing. So 900 divided by 0.9 gives me what here, somebody? A thousand. I'm being given a thousand Kenya shillings. I'm dividing, remember, a thousand Kenya shillings. This is zero. So I expect this to be a thousand exactly when I subtract. How about this actual goodwill at the end? Actual, actual, actual I, should, I should have written here actual closing goodwill. Actual closing goodwill or actual goodwill at reporting. So at reporting, are you able to see the reporting rate? Are you guys able to see the reporting rate? We oh, am alone. I'm alone. Reporting rate is 0 0.8. Reporting rate is 0 0.8. Then I'm wrong and you never correct me. This average, this average is supposed to be what year? Average is supposed to be what year, somebody? You have to write correct things. Average is supposed to be 0 0.75. Sorry for that. The average is supposed to be 0 0.75. The average is supposed to be 0 0.75. So 900 divided by 0.8. They are crones. Crones and crones, you can't multiply. These are crones and these are crones, you can't multiply. So that gives me what, 11.25. This gives me 11.25. Then I'm seeing something good. I'm seeing a forex, so is it a gain or a loss? Is it a gain or a loss? Is it a gain or a loss? It's an asset whose value is higher. I expected it to be 1,000, it's 11.25. So I can see a forex gain of 1.25. I can see a forex gain of 125. Thank you so much. Our forex gain of 125. And then straight away, I should be able to take this to the bucket of uh, to the reserve bucket. I take this to the reserve bucket. Remember, I've got uh, two owners here. I take this to the parents' uh, forex reserve and the SCI's forex reserve. That will really, really be very nice. So in this case, yeah, go ahead and translate this. Go ahead and translate this. Go ahead and translate this. Not translate, but I just uh, push on this to the reserves now. So the forex reserves, forex reserves. So we have here forex reserves. So we have, ladies and gentlemen, here forex reserves. We have here the parents FX reserve, FX reserve. So it will be one twenty five times eighty percent. One twenty five times eighty percent. One twenty five times eighty percent. 125 times 80 percent. So this is a hundred, a hundred. And then we have in this case here the NCI's forex reserve. Forex reserve, it will be 125 times 20 percent, which gives me is it 25 now? Twenty-five, yes, twenty-five. And now I'm through with the reserves basically. So please come here to the Forex Reserve. Are you able to remember this uh, translation reserve? Are they able to remember this in the balance sheet? Are they able to remember this translation reserve? Oi, oi, they're not able to remember. The translation reserve, yes. So please, this is normally the parent reserve. This is the parent reserve, Forex Reserve. You add both of them. Are you able to remember the net assets uh, forex reserve for the parent? For the parent. Are you able to remember that for the parent? 244. So you take 244, 244 plus the parent's forex reserve of this goodwill, 100. So this gives us 344. So the translation reserve here, you pick the parent's figure. You pick the parent's figure. Mariana has a question. Yes, please ask. All right, so as we wait for her to ask, remember, what are we doing? We have already finished part one. 
are now part two. We have consolidated. Now what we only need to do is to come and pass the entries, is to come and pass the entries. And the very first entry I would want you to pass there is the PPE. Now we have everything. Now we have everything. So I would want you to pass the PPE entry. I would want you to pass the PPE entry. Are you able to pass that PPE entry yourselves? Not many students will be able to understand, not understand but a name. Not many students will be able to do the PPE entry, even after giving them the fair value adjustments. Not many, not many. Very few students in Kenya would be able to do that correctly. Very few students will be able to do that correctly. Very few students. Very few students. So, Marianne, do you have the question ready? No, no, no. You will not take that forex gain on payables to the reserve. No, no, no. The reserve, if you look at, uh, in this case here, the IFRS, FRS 10, the reserve has only two components there. The reserve on the net assets and the forex uh, gain or loss on the goodwill. The, the figure you are talking about there already is in the net assets. So if you take it again separately here into this, you will be double counting. 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 I hope I've answered you, Mary Ann. All right. All right. So then we go to the PPE. We go to the PPE. Not many students, not many students will be able to get this correctly. This correctly. Remember, the fair value adjustment we got of 400 or 400 is in a foreign currency, is in 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 foreign currency. Let me move aside. Thank you. Thank you. So what IFRS 10 tells us regarding this foreign uh, exchange, whenever we have PPE, PPE, all right, fair value adjustment of PPE, always work with uh, the net book value. Net book value. So net book value means what here, the fair value adjustment minus its depreciation, minus its depreciation. Remember somewhere there you are able to see at reporting, we are 400, are you able to remember that 80? Are you able to remember that 80? Are you able to remember that 80? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Net book value. So it should be what? Yeah, somebody should be 320. So this is the net book value that you bring here. So you come and bring this 320. So remember that this is what here? This is in the form of crones. I would want to convert this to Kenya shillings, but now at reporting date. At reporting date, at reporting date. So 320 divided by what year? 320 divided by 320. Are they able to tell me I should divide this by what? At the reporting date rate, 0 0.8. The standard is very, very clear that you can't tell us that this 400 was at acquisition. This 80, because the depreciation item is at the, they are very clear. They have gone even ahead to give us an example there. You always work with the, the net book value to avoid many, many issues. Work with the net book value at the closing date, at the closing date, at the closing date, at the closing date. So that is it. So give me the PPE figure I write there. Give me the PPE figure I write here. Give me the PPE figure I write here. Oh, they are not talking to Mwalimu. They are not talking to Mwalimu here. All right. So we have here 12, 650. So that's what you're writing, 12, 650. That's what you're writing, 12, 650. So 12, 650, thank you so much. 
So can you kindly give me the figure of goodwill to write? Please give me the figure of goodwill to write down. I would want you guys to give me the goodwill figure that I should be able to write down. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Remember that one already you have translated. Eh? We have goodwill at closing. It should be 11.25. 11.25. 11.25. So this one does not need any adjustment, as I told you. Other intangible. Ah, where did I put this? Look at this stupid man here. We shall overcome. This 320 is supposed to be here. Divided by 0.8. We shall overcome. This intangible is no adjustment at all. So are you able to give me the other intangible uh, figure? Other intangible figure, 22, 37.5, 22, 37.5, 22, 37.5. Thank you very much. So then we go to current assets. In eventually, there's no UPS. In eventually, there's no UPS here. And, and also, we don't have any, for example, in eventually, is in transit. So no adjustment at all. Please come and give me this figure. No adjustments at all. Give me this figure. Inventory, no adjustments at all. Give me this figure. 4950, I'm being told. 4950, I'm being told. Thank you so much. Receivables, we have some abracadabra. Is there somebody who is able to tell me the abracadabra in receivables? Receivables, we have some abracadabra. Receivables, we have some abracadabra. Is there somebody who is able to remind me there? There's some abracadabra there. The 180, yes. There is an internal owing of 180, which I'll have to deduct from receivables, from receivables and from payables, because the H had given goods to S on account. So H has an internal receivable that is expecting to get from its subsidiary. And of course, S has an internal payable that is supposed to be paying to uh, the parent. So we have this 180. So that 180, is there any need for me to come and uh, am I going to translate this 180? Am I going to translate this 180? Am I going to translate this 180? No, no, because it's in Kenya shillings. So also come to the payables here. Come to the payables here. I have, I don't have it here because of the size of my boat. But I believe you guys are bright enough. You happen to be having payables figure. And I believe you have been able to subtract 180 there. Have you done that? Have you done that? Have you done that? From the payables. Remember the intra owing. You remove it from the payables and from the receivable. Thank you so much. So somebody is, is already giving me this figure. 37 what year? So this one, I'm being given a figure of 37. 37.50. Thank you so much. 37.50. 37, 37.70. Yeah? 37.70. 37.70. So receivable, receivable. We have that 770. How about your adjusted payable? Do you have your adjusted payable figure now? Is there somebody who has the adjusted payable figure of anybody who has their adjusted payable figure? Adjusted payable figure. Adjusted payable figure. They're not talking to me. Adjusted payable figure. They're saying 5070. Just write it there, 5070. But I would want you to put a star there. I would want you to put a star there because there is something there that we have to really deduct. There is something there we have to deduct later. I'll be telling you why we are deducting it. There is something we have to deduct from there. There is some gain. There is some gain that you have made, which is basically what here, intra group. Intra group. There is some gain there. That 18, we shall be able to translate it later. Let us leave, let us first of all leave it there. It's a bit, a bit complex. Uh, so from there, ladies and gentlemen, we shall be able to come here right away. Cash. There's no cash in transit. Please give me this figure here. There's no cash in transit. Please give me this figure here. 2450. So for cash, they're giving me a figure of 2450. So for cash, we have here 2450. No adjustment at all. 2450. So then are you able to give me the total assets? Please give me the total assets very fast. 
Give me the total assets. Give me the total assets. Please, please give me the total assets. So 27, 18. So we have here 27, 18, 27, 18, 27, 27, 182 .5. 27, 182.5, like that. Share capital, of course, you are picking them the way they are. Share capital, you are picking them the way they are. Share capital, you are picking them the way they are. Are you able to remember them? The share capital, we have 5,000 and share premium of 2,000. 5,000, share premium of 2,000, like that. 5,000 and 2,000, like that. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you will be able to straight away give us a retained earnings, so you will take this as a balancing figure. So we have NCI. Let's do NCI together. Let's do NCI together. Let's do this NCI together. We have this NCI very easy. These are be able to do it. This I'll be able to do it. NCI, I'll be able to do NCI very well. So the NCI at reporting, NCI at reporting, the NCI at reporting. So this NCI at reporting, what do I have here? NCI at reporting, I have NCI at acquisition. NCI at, are you able to see the NCI at acquisition? Oh, I'm alone. I'm alone. NCI at acquisition. Oi, oi, I'm alone. NCI at acquisition. You will see the NCI at acquisition. Nine hundred, right? Nine hundred, nine hundred. So please give us, in this case here, the share of PAP. Twenty percent of PAP. Twenty percent of PAP. Remember, their percentage is 20, eh? So 20% of PAP, who is able to remind us what the PAP figure was? Who, was the, who is able to remind us what the PAP figure was? PAP figure. PAP figure. I'm being told that PAP is 840, right? 840. So we have here PAP figure is 840. So 20% of 840, that gives me what figure, ladies and gentlemen? So I'm being told that this gives us what here? This gives us 61. This gives us 168. Eh? I'm being told that this gives us 168. This gives us 168. 168. So this gives us 168. There's no goodwill, uh, of course, impairment. So come and give me the Forex reserve. The Forex reserve for this NCI. Forex reserve for the NCI. Are you able to remember in this case here the, the two of them? You, you know, we, we got uh, NCI reserve, we got NCI reserve from translations of net assets, we got Forex reserve from OTM, Forex reserve, Forex reserve from translation of goodwill. Please add the two. But if you again, you can remind us that 61, eh? Net assets were 61, net assets were 61. How about goodwill? How about goodwill? 61 and 25. 61 and 25, giving me 80 what here, giving me 86 like that. And then you should be able to come and give me the NCI, the NCI at what year, the NCI at reporting, the NCI at reporting. You should be able to give me the NCI at what year at reporting. You should be able to give me the NCI at reporting. So NCI at reporting, which will be 11 what year? 1154. So the NCI at reporting, NCI at reporting as 11 what year? 1154 like that. 1154, 1154. All right. So please go straight away to uh, non-current uh, assets, or rather non-current uh, liabilities. Non-current liabilities. Are you able to see the non-current liabilities? 10% uh, loan stock. 10% loan stock, what do you have there? 
or the currencies are conflicting. The currencies are conflicting. The currencies are not okay. The currencies, I'm told they are not okay. The currencies, which currency here? Ah, this pup, yes. The pup, this pup here, yeah, this pup is uh, in crones. The pup is in crones. The pup is in crones. And remember pup, pup, we need to translate pup using what here? Yeah? Average. Pup has to be translated using average. Pup has to be translated using average. Pup has to be translated using average. And uh, that has skipped my mind. Pup has to be translated using average. So this 840, this 840 has to be, so I divided this by what here, somebody? This 840, I'll divide by what here, sorry for that. This 840, I divide by average, average of what here? 0. 0.85, is it 0. 0.85? Average, 0. 0.75, average of 0. 0.75, average of 0. 0.75. Sorry for that. So 20, so this one will give me what answer here. This one will give me what answer at the end of the day. The final answer here will be what year? Two twenty four, right? So two twenty four. So two twenty four. Two twenty four plus this plus nine hundred. Two twenty four plus eighty six plus nine hundred, which will give us what answer at the end of the day? I can also check this with my answers here. I can check this with my answers here. I can check. So NCI basically should be 1310. NCI basically, NCI basically, NCI basically should be 1310. Is it 1210 or 1310? Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. It should be 1310. The correct answer should be 1310. I know why. Even this one is wrong. Ah. Uh, we should end this session here, but uh, because of speed, even this NCI, you know, even these are crones. Even these are crones. Even these are crones. Even this 900 is, is crone. This 900 is crone. So remember, this NCI has to be in form of what here? Has to be in the form of Kenya shillings. Has to be in the form of Kenya shillings. We picked up, uh, it as we were in a hurry. We we're in a hurry. We're in a hurry. So 900 divided by what year? This is at acquisition, remember. This is at acquisition, remember. So 900 divided by what year, ladies and gentlemen? Divided by 0 0.9. Divided by 0 0.9. So then this will be 1,000. That is now how we get this 1310. 1310. Sorry for that. The correct answer is supposed to be 1310. So first of all, are we in agreement up to there? Are we in agreement now? Is now everything okay? Great. Now we are in agreement. Thank you very much for those who raised to not have learned this really. We're in a hurry to finish because of time. But I'm not afraid of this at all. I'm not afraid of this at all because I'm so sure. I've marked these papers for so long. Which student is that in Kasnev as a student? Under that exam pressure, do you think we'll be able to get this uh, working correct? I mean, it will be like a one out of maybe 10,000 students. For me, it is all about what here, the seven correct entries, the seven correct entries, the seven correct entries. The moment in this case you have done those seven correct entries, I'm not afraid. Seven correct entries within 37 minutes, I'll always salute you. Seven correct entries within 37 minutes. But if you're looking for perfection, like now what you're trying to do here, this will take you two hours and you will fail. Will take you two hours and you will fail. It's tough, yes. It's tough, yes. All right, so then do you have in this case, yes, and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, what do you have there for, uh, what do you have there for uh, your 10% loan stock? 10% loan stock, is there somebody who has 3,000? 10% loan stock, is there somebody who has 3,000? 10% loan stock, 3,000, right? 3,000. How about, ladies and gentlemen, how about, ladies and gentlemen, the deferred tax. Deferred tax. I'm so sure you have deferred tax somewhere there. Do you have 15? Deferred, do you have 2235? Deferred tax. Is there somebody who has 2235? Deferred tax 2235. All right. How about your current tax? Current tax. Do we have anybody? 
current tax. What do we have there for current tax? Current tax. 1450. Anybody with 1450 has current tax. Current tax. Current tax. Current tax. So the only figure that I would want you to adjust a little bit, the only figure that I would want you to adjust a little bit is your trade payables, trade payables, trade payables, trade payables. I would want you to adjust the figure of trade payables. Just go to the trade payables. So trade payables, in this case here, we have something there. You guys had given me a figure of trade payables. So trade payables, what do we have? We have here 3,800, 3,800 for trade payables. So we have here 3,800 for the parent. For the subsidiary trade payables, what do we have here for trade payables? 1160. So this 1160 is at the end of the year. It is at 0.8. It is at 0.8. We have intra group of 180. And then remember, we got some gain. We got some gain. If you remember, there's a, a translation gain. A translation gain of how much? Was it 18? A translation gain of 18. Do you remember that 18? Do you remember that 18? Do you remember that 18? Yes. And this 18, remember, it was done at the end of the year. Even if it's again, don't use average. Because this retranslation was done at the end of the year. At the end of the year. So it has to be, remember, it's in crones, eh? In crones. So it has to be divided by 0. 0.8. Which student again will be able to remember this 0. 0.8? We don't remember that concept. At the time, but I'll count that as a, a down. Ninjas, you must always get some things down. So then the correct answer, remember this gain is coming from uh, a subsidiary fee. All right. So then what do we have at the end of the day here? What do we have at the end of the day? What is the final answer at the end of the day? What is the final answer at the end of the day? 18 crones, yes. Mother, the final answer is supposed to give you 50, 47 point something. 50, 47.5. 50, 47.5. 50, 47.5. So then I would want you to do me a favor. Please work backwards, subtracting, subtracting, subtracting until you give me, until now you give me, until you give me, until you give me the retained earnings. The group retained earnings. Is there somebody who can work back, back, back? Anybody is able to work back, back, back until they give me the group's retained earnings. Anybody is able to work back, back, back until they give me the group's retained earnings. You work with that total asset figure down there, total asset figure down there. It will be your total equity and liabilities. And then you subtract all the other things back, back, because you have everything. You have everything now. You have everything apart from retained earnings. Apart from retained earnings, now we have everything. Apart from retained earnings, now we have everything. 8106. Ah, <laughs> Marvin. <laughs> That's too high. 6801. Others are giving me 6801. Others are giving me 6796. Let me get more answers from you guys. Hey, can I do it? And we can do it. We can do this. We can do this because we don't have an associate. We don't have UPS. Ah, we can do this very fast. We can do this very fast. Retain the earnings for the group. So retain the earnings for the group. Retain the earnings for the group. We can do this. So retain the earnings for the group. Please give me the parents, eh? Give me the parents, give me the parents, retained earnings from the balance sheet given. The parents retained earnings from the balance sheet given. Are you able to see it? Are you able to see it? We don't even have impairment uh, loss. I mean, this is very easy. You can get very easy. We am alone. I'm alone. From the statement of financial position, go to the parent, form of parent. So we have here 5,900. This is very easy, actually. We have even finished it. So from there, come and give me share of pump. Share of pump, share of pump. So remember, it is 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 
times 840. But now we are very wise, mother. These are crones, isn't it? These are crones. Now we are very, very wise, which we'll have to exchange using the average rate. Using the average rate. And the average rate is uh, 0. What here? 0. 0.75. So could you then kindly take here 80% times 840 times 0.75? Remember why 80%? Because the parent has 80%. The parent has 80%. The parent has 80%. 80%. So which gives me 896, which gives me 896. And that is it because you don't have nothing really to take here. Nothing more. So come and add here to give me the groups, the groups retained earnings, which will end up giving me what figure really. Groups retained earnings. The groups retained earnings, the groups retained earnings, which will end up giving me 67, 96, 67, 96. That is the final answer. Kwisha Maneno, it has been a great morning, ladies and gentlemen, hosting you guys as always. Please let's practice. We are practicing using the concept of what year? Seven ticks within what year? Within 37 minutes. Otherwise, for the students who will be watching this on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. It's very important you subscribe to my channel. And of course, I will be able to, I can't forget to invite you guys to study with us. Our mobile phone number is 0719 525,000. 0719 525,000. Otherwise, thank you very much. We shall overcome. Got nine ticks. Great. Move. <laughs> okay. Got nine ticks. Thank you so much. Great, 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 great. Have you guys learned uh, great things today? Have you guys learned great things today? Have you guys learned great things today? Great, 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 great. And then the most important planning is the one of seven ticks. A lot, great. Seven ticks within 37 minutes. Stay safe, yes. But are you working today? Are you going to work today? Or can we call for a class during the day? Are you, are you working today? Or as the JBZ given all of us, like myself, I work for an international company. International companies, they really fear chaos. You're told, go and stay safe at home. No even working online. Are we free like myself here? Or you're going to work? <laughs> then we can't have. But I can give you some homework, isn't it? I can give you some kind of assignment, I mean. I can give you some kind of assignment. Yeah. And then you use the concept of what year? Yeah? Seven ticks, 37 minutes. Seven ticks, 37 minutes. In the evening, not possible because we have AMA today. Thank you. Bye. We have AMA today. Bye.